And so you know, maybe you can choose two questions to, to, to answer. You, know, you choose one here, one question from here, and then we pick one from the comments or so. How about that? Are you looking for an honest agent to buy, sell, or rent your properties? Contact us at IPA in the description below. Okay. Um, but actually, this uh, question one, why are prices of homes increasing despite COVID-19? Just now, we have already addressed it. And uh, so, uh, maybe the rest of these questions, we can also push into another session, maybe next month or so. But I want to address bullet point two, will freehold property prices drop and under what circumstances? Basically, looking at all property types, whether housing or commercial properties, industrial properties, property prices fluctuate up and down according to the economy. But the, the difference between 30-year leasehold industrial, 60-year leasehold industrial, or 99-year leasehold um, residential versus freehold, the, the, the uncertainty that um, there will be a lease depreciation, the, as, as the estate grows older and older, that the length of useful life is reduced, um, is not there. For freehold property, you own it for eternity. Of course, there's the government land acquisition law that will still allow government to take back freehold land if they ever wanted to. However, for government to actually do compulsory acquisition of freehold or leasehold land doesn't matter. They have got to get um, the case pass through parliament. You, you cannot just have a root minister who just wants to compulsorily acquire, which means that freehold is actually without that 99-year depreciation. A 99-year lease depreciation is actually 1 upon 99, which is about 1% of a value depreciation per year. Secondly, freehold properties in Singapore, I think for residential properties, they might be only uh, as few as 5% of our 1.5 million HDB flats and uh, private residences, HDB flats being almost 1.1 million private residences are about 400,000, including landed homes. When you add them up together, the total stock of our housing is about 1.5 million units. Freehold makes up only about 5% of that 1.5 million. So, so there's at least some rarity in value. And if you think that there is opportunity in future for um, intensification and upgrading, Freehold gives you um, many, many rounds of upgrading opportunities, right? Um, because the land ownership is perpetual. So Freehold property prices will drop, as will 99-year ones dropping, depending on the economy. But in general, its drop should be less, should be more muted because it is rarer and it doesn't have the 1 upon 99 depreciation every year. Okay, so Suyong, because in the interest of time, I also don't want you to drive back too late. Let's look at the comments now and we just address one of the comments. And guys, you know, we are we really want to answer all your questions. So if you want us to have a second session right okay please let us know in the comments as well just type second session so that you know we i know that there's demand and we can actually organize a second session for you so please type in the comments to let us know and in the meantime let's just take one more question so you want to choose or you want to pick for you <laughs> let's see yeah mm, someone was asking something about lottery you know um let's look at it mm. Let's find one more question to answer. There's so many questions it's scrolling, scrolling up to look for it. Just now, some someone typed something about um, lottery or something like that. So, Young, do you see that comment? Do you happen to see it? It's on. No, um, uh, but this has been discussed a lot in the last two weeks because Minister Desmond <coughs> Lee. Oh, um, okay. He's our new. Um, Minister for National Development, he was talking about um, in future when, for example, um, highly desirable locations such as the Greater Southern Waterfront, if we were to develop HDB flats there, then again, just like the peak, um, at the pinnacle, sorry, pinnacle at Tanjong Paga, that there will be some lottery effect because if you were lucky enough to get the BTO, 
then after the MOP five years or longer period, then there will be uh, people who would be able to buy in, let's say, at $500,000, but then sell it uh, eight years later at $1.2 million, uh, say, sometime in year 2035, let's say. Um, and that would mean that there's a lottery effect. Yes, the lottery effect, in fact, is not very, if you, uh, I hate to use the word fair, but look, um, we have got limited um, dollars and taxpayers are subsidizing the construction and the purchase of HDB flats. BTOs as a category are heavily subsidized on the construction land value as, as well as we give additional grants to families who are, say, moving closer to each other or families who are sort of constrained uh, in some uh, challenge in some ways, right? So he wanted to address this question of how do we equilibrate? Maybe we should impose. He didn't suggest, but uh, I think newspaper articles as well as commentators have suggested some form of uh, restriction. Um, to, to me, the, I think the problem is a self-created one. We shouldn't even be building HDB that are in such choice locations. Because if you want a waterfront HDB, Pongmo has a lot, Sengkang has a lot of waterfront HDB, but you don't see them having this lottery effect. The lottery effect came about because HDB that are built very near to commercial centers where the jobs are. Um, in a way, you are paying higher for the HDB flat because you are saving more money transporting yourself to and from work, to and from the amenities, right? So where the economic center is, where the money and wealth is, if you build homes close to them, you ought to be paying higher because it gives you convenience and savings. There are many suggestions, including reducing the length of lease. And just now one commentator also asked, what about um, allowing banks to, re, uh, to lend money for HDB flats that are sold on 50-year leases or 30-year leases and having banks to um, finance them as well? In fact, counterintuitively, this doesn't work. It will help to make HDB resale prices even higher. If you want to uh, reduce lease, uh, same for the experiment that was done on private housing in Jalan Jurong Kecil near to uh, Beauty World, there is a 60-year uh, private residential block that was sold, um, considering that maybe some of the retirees want to own them and live in them, and so 60-year lease would be enough. The 60-year lease started out cheap as cheap land for the developer, by the time the developer launched it for sale, the 60-year lease was sold at prices that were very similar to the 99-year lease in the Bukit Timah neighborhood. And subsequently, in the resale market, the prices came up to almost match the 99-year lease because the starting quantum, the first buyer, uh, had a much lower entry point. But in the secondary market, in the resale market, they started to equilibrate and caught up with the 99-year uh, prices. So reducing the length of lease is uh, the most uh, undesirable solution to this problem. Wait, uh, somebody also asked about MOP, increasing the MOP duration. Do you want to give a quick comment on that? Yes, increasing the MOP duration is actually the one of the better solutions. In fact, there is another solution that was proposed by some other commentators today in a, in a, another media article that I read, that let's make it um, non-resellable. Let's make these prime uh, HDB flats a non-open market, meaning it is a 99-year MOP. Once you buy it, you your MOP is right for 99 years. And should the family need to sell, uh, let's say due to um, financial situation, let's say you bought a three room, but you have uh, outgrown the three room, you can only resell it back to the HDB. And th this would be fair. In that case, you resell it back to HDB. HDB can lay out the formula for you when you bought this BTO, let's say at $500,000 because it is choice uh, waterfront home at Greater Southern Waterfront. And in five years time, you want to resell, you give HDB a valid reason, HDB will take it back from you at $500,000 minus the depreciation of the lease. 
or in 15 or 20 years time when you want to sell because by that time your children are all teenagers you need a bigger house uh, need a bigger flat you can still resell back to hdb hdb becomes the market maker they buy it back from you at your BTO price five hundred thousand minus the twenty years lease uh, depreciation, and so meaning then there's no lottery effect. You have actually paid similar to uh, a cheaper form of rental for twenty years if you buy these choice flats, and then HDB can refurbish the unit, resell it in the market at another valuation where the MOP again is up to the ninety nine year mark to the next. Uh, resale buyer, meaning HDB should take control of this process. Then there will be no lottery effect, and taxpayers would then not be shortchanged in terms of subsidizing the wealth growth of certain families who zong ma piao piao bei piao. Wow, Siyong, thanks so much for, you know, explaining this to us, you know, and with that, right, okay, I just saw some questions, right, from some of you. Uh, yes, okay, we are going to be holding a second session based on the responses. Siyong, you okay now? You okay to hold a second session? Ask you first. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, uh, okay, so we'll maybe, be holding a second session. Uh, yeah. Maybe if this New Year period is going to be boring because we are not able to go out and walk around and travel on overseas holidays, yeah. Let's do it around the new year, man. Yeah, that's really awesome, man. Because like, you know, it will be really great, you know, since we cannot go on holiday and I don't know whether there will be fireworks or so. So we can just hear so young talk about property. I think it's gonna be quite fun. And yeah, so super appreciate it. And guys, if you have questions, this is where you submit it, right? You can see my Instagram handle there. You can actually follow me and message me your questions. I also send them to Sui Young. If you want, you can also send Sui Young. Uh, your questions, but I think Suyong have a lot of fans, so his inbox probably very full. So if you want your questions answered, you can also send to me as well. And with that, I really want to say big thank you to every one of you who actually stayed so late while we have overthink. So many people on YouTube, so many people on Facebook actually watching us tonight. So really, thank you so much, Suyong, again. You know, so late already, and you're still here. Um, you know, with us, and then thank you everyone for also right. You know, taking your time you know on a weekday evening you can be doing so many things but all of you are so passionate about learning about property about growing yourself and you guys are actually watching this you know really intense session on property in singapore 